everyone, it's Danzy, and I'll start this video off by saying, I'm not dead. This last year has just been crazy for a variety of reasons, which unfortunately made it really difficult for me to upload videos consistently. But with the new season starting up, I'm back. So before we tackle season six, here's my quick roundup and review of season five last year. Let's start out with the positive. Yeah, I think this was pretty universally liked. I'm not sure I'd call it the best scene the show's ever done, or even the best battle scene for that matter, but for what it was and what it was trying to get across, it was good. The framing was desperate and frantic, and all the things it needed to be for a White Walker attack. The reason I say I didn't love it like some people did was due to a couple of things, like the massive overuse of shaky cam and, well, this whole bit. Oh, and the small nitpick that John and crew left on boats from Hard Home, and in the next episode show up at the north side of the wall at Castle Black, which is kind of a hilarious geography goof when you think about it. I think a lot of people enjoyed these scenes because they wanted to see Cersei get her comeuppance, but as someone who's in the minority of actually liking Cersei's character, honestly this was some of the best stuff they've done in a long time when it comes to humanizing her. Cersei's always at her best when she's backed into a corner, and I think Lena Headey did a great job in portraying that. And I really hope that they have more of these character-focused moments with her going forward. In a world where a lot of other storylines have really been roided up, I like that they decided to keep a really quiet and contemplative story that wasn't over the top. Okay, until the end where it did get a bit over the top. But still, Arya's story was pretty on point this season. A big, big theme in both A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons is that of identity. Sansa becoming Elaine, Theon becoming Reek, and Arya losing herself completely to become a faceless man. Arya continues to travel down a really dark path, and it's fascinating. The dialogue was good, the scenes were well paced, the sets looked cool, Maisie Williams did a great job, and Tom Valachia is outstanding as always. I think he makes a great Jack and Hagar. And yeah, aside from the Marin Tran stuff, I don't have many negative things to say here. For me, it was by far the strongest stuff of the season. So, what didn't I like about Season 5? Um, well, a lot actually, but as I say, in the interest of keeping this a quick review and not a long and rambling rant, I did narrow it down to the following couple of things. Now, to be fair, I think Sansa is one of the hardest characters to adapt on screen, because she's probably the most introspective character in the series. Most of Sansa's characterizations are internal thoughts, not external actions. This is something that works better in print, because you have insight into someone's thoughts. But in a TV show, it's much harder to get across the gears turning in someone's head. For example, someone like Oberyn is much easier to adapt, because he's characterized more through his actions and not his thoughts. So, while I'm going to go a little easier on the showrunners for this one than my other negative points, I don't think that making her take on Jane Poole's role was the best way to go about, well, I'll say visually spicing up a quiet and more contemplative character. For one thing, what exactly is your plan here, Littlefinger? What advantage does Sansa gain by marrying crazy McMurdery rapeface over here? If Sansa is the one person you care about, then why put her in an unsafe position? And if you don't care about her, then why did you bother to save her from the Lannisters? And they not only illogically bent the plot around so hard to get her back in the North, but they also regressed her character's development for the sake of empty shock value. At the end of Season 4, she's evolving into a politically savvy character, but by the end of this season, she's right back to being a victim again. If they really couldn't make Sansa's book storyline in the Vale work, then fine. I'm not arguing that everything needs to be exactly like it is in the books but at least have it make sense and further the characters that are involved. Yeah, when you make Stannis look worse than the Boltons, you know something has gone seriously wrong in your adaptation of A Song of Ice and Fire. For whatever reason, the showrunners have never liked Stannis, and because they didn't like him, they twisted his character around to fit their personal bias. I mean, yeah, there's not really much else I can say here. Save for his big scene at the end of season 4, they've never understood his character, and were seemingly hell-bent on making him a villain. Honestly, in a way I'm kind of glad that they killed him, rather than continue to adapt his character this badly. Also, while we're here... Brienne 
Catelyn, what the hell? Did you seriously just forsake a promise you made to both Catelyn and Jaime to seek petty revenge against Stannis, who, at this point, is the best potential ally you have in saving Sansa? I'm sorry, what's your sword called again? Personal Vendetta Keeper? Okay, before I start ripping into what is by far the worst plotline this show has ever had, I want to say that I think the Dorne plotline was doomed from the start, because you're taking a character that has nothing to do with this particular part of the story, and shoehorning him in where he doesn't belong. Jamie's entire trip to Dorne is just one big cul-de-sac. His character didn't grow from it, and Marcella would have died just the same if he hadn't even gone to Dorne to rescue her. It was never going to work because you're trying to take a Lannister-shaped peg and shove it into a Martell-shaped hole. But let's say Dorne wasn't a colossal waste of screen time. Even if it served no purpose, it still could have been filler with engaging and interesting characters, right? Well, no, because what we got at many points was just straight-up insulting to the viewer's intelligence. Every part of Dorne, from the fight scenes to the dialogue and character motivations, were just so far beneath what we know the show is capable of producing. And that's really what my frustration surrounding Season 5 boils down to. This show has had some great stuff in it. Look at Ned's execution, look at the Red Wedding, look at all this wonderfully written dialogue and character progression. The criticism I'm giving of Season 5 isn't out of hate. Far from it. I want more than anything to love this show the way I used to. The way I still love the books. So, where does all of this leave us for Season 6? Well, that's up to HBO. But I want to ask you guys, what do you think we'll see from the upcoming season? What did you think of Season 5? Do you think the show's gotten better in the last couple of seasons, or is it headed down a bad path? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys soon for weekly episode reviews of Season 6, and also a fun upcoming Top 10 list. Take care. Mm -hmm.